Hey everybody, Raymond here. Today I want to talk to you about something I've been seeing in videos lately in the stacking and coin community, specifically discussing a local coin shop and a coin dealer bank accounts being either suspended or closed, and to really let you know that bank account closures and suspensions are nothing new. Um, these things happen when banks or inst financial institutions, such as banks and, and credit unions, see activity that they feel might be suspicious. And I want to discuss what led to things like this, and that is the Anti-Money Laundering Countering the Financing of Terrorism Act, uh, also known as the BSA Bank Secrecy Act, is the common name for a series of laws and regulations enacted in the United States to com combat money, la money laundering and the financing of terrorism. The BSA provides a foundation to promote financial transparency and deter and detect those who seek to misuse the U.S. financial system to launder criminal proceeds, finance terrorist acts, or move funds for other illicit purposes. The Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2020, the AML Act, Modified subchapter 2 of chapter 53 of the Title 31 United States Code, the legislative framework com commonly referred to as the BSA, it requires financial institutions to have reasonably designed risk-based programs to prevent money laundering and the financing of terrorism by statute individuals, banks, and other financial, financial institutions that are subject to BSA record-keeping requirements. For purposes of consistency with the AML Act and the F, the FDIC now uses the term AML slash CFT rather than BSA AML. So what that really is, is saying is that there are times that when financial institutions see big increases of cash, which can happen in coin shops, you know, to give you an idea... Uh, you know, if somebody buys five ounces of gold, you're talking $10,000. And that $10,000 will trigger a, a coin shop or whatnot. They're supposed to actually report that, hey, this person, you know, did a $10,000 transaction. Um, so you'll sometimes see where people come in and they'll, they'll buy under that amount to get around that. Now, what happens is a lot of coin shops and coin dealers end up having a substantial amount of cash, which, you know, that's one of the reasons some of them have really big vaults because they know that, hey, if they go start depositing big sums of currency, it can actually affect their account. Matter of fact, right here, there's the suspicious activity report that's required and any FDIC supervised institution shall file a suspicious activity report with the appropriate federal law enforcement agencies and the Department of Treasury in accordance with the form's instructions by sending a completed suspicious activity report to the FinCEN in the following circumstances. Inside abuser involving any amount. So whenever there's an FDIC supervised institution, which is a bank or a... a um, whatchamacallit, a, a credit unit, if they detect any known or fed, suspected federal criminal violation or pattern of criminal violations committed or attempted against the FDIC institution or involving a transaction or transactions conducted through the FDIC in, supervised institution where the FDIC supervised institution believes that it was either actual or potential victim of a criminal violation or a series of criminal violations or that the FDIC supervised institution was used to facilitate a criminal transaction and the FDIC supervised institution has a substantial basis for identifying one of the FDIC supervised institution directors, officers, employees, agents, or other institutions affiliated parties as having committed or aided in the commission of a crim the criminal violation regardless of the amount involved in the violation. So what that really breaks down to is you know, um, the, the federal government, as well as the FDIC and the institutions that oversee banking, they want to make sure that criminal organizations and terrorist organizations and uh, whatnot don't have the ability to do money laundering. Um, you know, so to give you an idea, one of the things that's kind of known to be able to clean your money is to go to like a casino go to a coin shop, go to coin shows, go to go to places where there's heavy amounts of financial, you know, transactions going on, especially paper money. Now, 
let's say a coin shop or a coin dealer had been running at a certain rate you know they had weekly deposits maybe they're putting five grand ten grand in but all of a sudden that increases substantially to like thirty five thousand forty thousand a hundred thousand what have you and when there isn't a record of like uh checks uh, going back and forth where that money's already been looked at and processed and known that it's clean large cash deposits will actually at times trigger financial institutions to do what they call a suspicious activity report. Now, if you look at the language in there, it literally said that it, it's not that the people that are bringing the money are, are the ones that are the criminal. It's the person that bought the gold, went into the casino and, and you know gambled for a little bit and took their money back out of the machine, went up to the cashier and got new fresh money um, from instead of the money that they brought into that uh, casino or institution at the time, um, you know, somebody could go to a, a number of coin shops and buy just a couple gold ounces at a time and be able to put a lot of dirty money back into the banking system via these uh, coin shops, bullion dealers and whatnot. And so, you know, from time to time, Though the coin shop and the bullion dealers will get flagged and it might say we're closing your account until you can kind of justify this type of money. And I honestly think that sometimes it's also a misunderstanding where the bank doesn't really understand that a coin shop dealing in bullion has a lot of legit customers and they're able to come in there and purchase gold. To give you an idea, one of the things that... Um, the coin shop I work at, you can only buy one ounce of gold with cash. The rest you have to do a check uh, because that actually prevents the coin shop or the, the, the bullion dealer, that check prevents them from getting in trouble with laundering physical cash. Uh, when you do check deposits, you don't have the same issues because the bank will actually uh, report you know that stuff on your behalf that, hey, such and such put out this much money. Um, it's it's good. It's a legit transaction. They had the money in the bank already. They got it from legal means. You know whether it's business, working, savings, things like that. And so, it's really important to kind of understand that there is not this big giant uh, banking crisis when it comes to uh, coin dealers and local coin shops. It really falls under the fact that, you know, when you're dealing with large sums of cash, if you're not able to provide reports that say, hey, Bob Jones came in and he spent $15,000, or you're not, you know, complying with, with the actual law that says, hey, any transaction that is $10,000 or more needs to be reported and written down and the person's name and information and everything. Um, you know, that's why things like this happen. And I kind of wanted to clarify that for people and, and let them know that, you know, honestly, as you guys know that watch my channel, or even if you're new to the channel, I don't do, um, you know, fear-based uh, videos. I literally keep it to the facts where, where I think things are, where I think things will be. And to give you guys an idea, those that did not know, I actually have two advanced degrees in accounting and business administration and finance. So, you know, I basically know what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, the banking system and taxes and whatnot. Um, but, you know, I hope that this kind of clears some things up for people that were maybe going, well, wow, you know, the banking uh, institutions are targeting coin dealers and bullion dealers. They're, they're not really targeting them. They're literally just, they'll run reports and they'll go, wait a minute, we got these big, you know, influxes of cash and uh, we don't think it lines up. And I think that's kind of one of the things where maybe coin shop owners and banking institutions and bullion dealers might need to sit down and discuss, you know, the potential of things and how they happen, what to look out for, you know, somebody that's consistently buying you know, uh, enough gold just under the radar kind of thing. To give you an idea, that $10,000 threshold is in a 24-hour period. So if a guy comes in at 11 a.m. on uh, Monday 
and then arrives at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, and he spends 8000 on Monday and 8000 on Tuesday, but that's in the 24-hour period. That's a $16,000 cash transaction that actually needs to be reported, and some people don't really understand or realize that that is how that clock works. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things to consider. Um, I honestly think that the people that are having their accounts closed like they are or suspended are just simple misunderstandings of the laws and regulations that are in place to protect everybody. And again, I just want to let you know, bank account closure, closures and suspensions are nothing new. All right, if you want to correspond, it's ravenhawkcoins at gmail.com. Our PO box is 721-296, Norman, Oklahoma, 73070. Like always, please make sure to take care of one another. We'll see you real soon. Raven Hawk Coins, have a great day.